Shalom, beloveds of the King. Today we come and I'm just wanting to share a prophetic word as we are entering tonight as the sun sets. Today is the 30th day of the biblical calendar. It's the 30th day of the 12th month on the biblical calendar according to the new moon calendar that we keep, which is the way that the Father has taught me and taught many of us how to keep his appointed times. So today we get to the, we are in the 30th day of the 12th month. And on this 30th day of the 12th month, we will be entering into a time of where we are now going to be able to enter into the new year. So we will go into the first day of the month of Aviv, where we will now enter where they talk about the month of Nisan. And so truly this is a month of miracles because this is the month of when um, it's the first fruits where the first fruit offering gets given where the Israelites are commanded at the time of Passover in order to be able to take their first fruits offering into the temple in order to be able to offer their first fruits. So truly this is a time of when the father is wanting to be able to raise up at this time a first fruits offering for himself as well. This is a very significant day because this is a day that if we go and we look at our Bibles and that's why I've always, I always knew that there is such excitement about a new year. And why is it that it's not really covered in, in scripture? But yet it is, and it is a very, very important scripture. And that is the scripture that we will find in Exodus chapter 40. And so in Exodus chapter 40 from verses 1, it says, And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, on the first day of the first new moon, you are to raise up the tabernacle place of the tent of appointment and you shall put it in the ark of the witness and screen the ark with the veil and you shall bring it in the table. And so in verse 17, it says, and it came to be in the first new moon of the second year on the first day of the new moon that the dwelling place was raised up. So how significant as we are entering into the time of our new year tonight, there is going to be an erecting, a raising up where we need to stand up, where we need to raise up and become that tabernacle that is to be presented to the Father. And so if we go to Acts, because it is so powerful, because in Acts it talks about where we are supposed to become a tabernacle that needs to be um, raised up for him. And so the Father wants to raise up a tabernacle. Remember, there is not a physical temple right now. He is not dwelling in a temple made of man's hands, but he wants to be able to dwell in a temple that is going to be a living body for him, which if we go look at, um, so let's first read here and then we see how we become the living temple in 1 Corinthians. If we go and read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So let us first read in Acts chapter 15 from verses 16 and it says, and after this, I shall return and rebuild the booth of David which has fallen down and I shall rebuild its ruins and I shall set it up. So if we start reading, let us first start reading in verse 14. So we read in Acts chapter 15 from verses 14 and it says, Shimon has declared how Alua first visited the nations to take out of them a people for his name. So understand, he is going to raise them out of the nations. He visited the nations to take out of them a people for his name. So what do you think he's doing right now? He's going to raise up a remnant, a first fruits offering from the nations that are those that he's going to take out of them a people for his name. Do you understand the significance of the father's name? How can you be part of that people if you do not even know his name? He says, and the words of the prophets agree with this as it has been written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the booth of David, which has fallen down. And I shall rebuild its ruins and I shall set it up so that the remnant of mankind shall seek 
even all the nations who my name has been called, says Yahuwah, who is doing this. So understand. So the remnant of mankind. So these are those in the, in the nations. So this isn't just talking about the Jews. This is talking about so that the remnant of mankind shall seek Yahuwah. Even all the nations on whom my name has been called, says Yahuwah, who is doing this. So you see, he is raising up for himself a people who he's going to be able to raise up in this time for his name. And they are to become a tabernacle for him. So if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, now it says, he says, um, or do you not know that he who is joined to a whole is one body? So we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we are looking at verse 16 where it says, we do, or do you not know that he who is joined to a whole is one body? For he says, the two shall become one flesh, and he who is joined to the master is one spirit. Flee whoring every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits whoring sins against his own body. Or do you not know, verse 19, so 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, or do you not know that your body is the dwelling place of the set-apart spirit who is in you, which you have from Alua, and you are not your own, for you were bought with a price, therefore esteem Alua in your body and in your spirit, which are of Alua. So there we go. So we are to esteem our body because our body is the temple of Alua. Then if we go look at 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and it says from verses 14, Do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, and what fellowship has light with darkness, and what agreement has Messiah with Belial, or what part does a believer have with an unbeliever? And what union has the dwelling place of Alua with idols? For you are a dwelling place of the living owl. All all has said, I shall dwell in them and walk among them and I shall be their people and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says Yahuwah, and do not touch what is unclean and I shall receive you and I shall be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me and Yahuwah, says Yahuwah the Almighty. So that's why he says then in Chapter 7, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Having then these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of the flesh and spirit, perfecting set-apartness in the fear of Eloah. So what does he need? You see, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And he's telling us to come out of everything. That is unclean and we are to become this tabernacle. So we see in scripture in Exodus chapter 14 that this is a time when this tabernacle was erected and we are supposed to become the dwelling place of Elua to be able to carry his glory. Now I want to share with you today as the father woke me up at half past two this morning rather violently with a violent storm of wind that we have. And so I woke up to this terrible wind and I woke up and, and I still went and I stood and I opened up the sliding um, door and and started to speak to this, to this wind and tell it to be still. But nothing was happening and I continued to pray and nothing was happening. And then I came and I sat at, on my bed and I just started praying. And the father said, my child, these winds are the winds of change that have started to blow. And this is what I want to share today as a prophetic word that the father is wanting to release for this new season that we are going into. And this new season is called the winds of change that are starting to blow. And we need to understand that we need to be still and know that he's your Yahuwah. He's Yah. 
Because as these winds are going to start blowing, there's going to be much that's going to come upon the earth. And so the father then asked me, so I said to the father, father, why did we not see the new moon on the 29th? Because normally we see the new moon on the 29th. Why this year are we seeing the new moon on, why this month do we see the new moon on the 30th? Now it's so interesting because he started to talk me, talk to me about number 30 and he says this number carries the symbolic association of other numbers such as number three which is divine perfection, which is multiplied by 10. So it's three times 10, and 10 is the number for fulfillment. And then you also multiply, it's also five, it's multiplied by six, five times six. So five is the number for grace, six is the number for spirit man, and this implies the perfection or the fulfillment of the natural man who is now saved by the grace of Yahuwah. This number is associated with maturity for full time coming into the ways of Yahuwah and to the service of Yahuwah. This is the age where the Levites complete their five years of training and are released for service in the temple. Now, isn't that amazing? I think if a lot of us were to look at our lives, we would really say that the last five years have really been a very, very strenuous time. But on this 30th day of the 12th month, that he chose it wasn't to be on the 29th day, but on the 30th day, Abba is wanting to release a priesthood because this is the priesthood that is to be able to bring service in this tabernacle. So we need to be able to become this first fruits remnant, this first fruits harvest for the Father that must be ready to be able to be working for him to raise up this tabernacle for him. And he's also the age where Yahushua was released into his ministry. David was also 30 when he started to reign, and that is in Samuel, 2 Samuel 5 verse 4. So it implies that the person's character is fashioned to the point of maturity so that they have now, they have been able to have the discernment that they need in order for them to be able to come into the fullness of serving the Father in his service. And it's also the word for key. It's the Hebrew word for key. Ki kavia, that means burning fire and flame, flaming. So it's a flaming, burning fire. So may we be that flaming, burning fire for the Father. So we are those that will become a burning, flaming fire for the Father filled with the Ruach. But you see, there's a danger to this at the same time because for those that are going to be the first fruits that are willing to be thrust forth, into this new season where the winds of change need to uproot everything out of us that's not of him. At the same time, it's also a time for the world where Yoshua was betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. And so we must understand that in the days ahead, we also will be those where there will be many brother that will betray brother. And so it. Also, there are those that are going to go into this time of betrayal where they will betray Yahushua by denying him and betraying him and going further and further into a world system and falling from the path that we are called to walk in. And so then the Father um, has given also a prophetic word for the fact that we are to be able to be a people. So he also gave me yesterday the scripture in Psalm chapter 24. And Psalm chapter 24 talks about who may go up into the mountain of Yahuwah. So it's Psalm 24 from verse 3. And it says, who goes up into the mountain of Yahuwah? And who does stand in his set apart place? He who has innocent hands. He who has innocent hands and a clean heart. Who did not bring his life to naught. 
and did not swear deceivingly. So you see, there was no deception on his mouth. He receives a blessing from Yahuwah and righteousness from Elua for his deliverance. This is the generation of those who seek him. So this is the generation of those who are seeking him, who seek your face, who seek Abba Yahuwah's face. And that's why he says, lift up your gate, lift up your heads, O your gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and let the sovereign of esteem come in. So are we being those doors? Are we being those gates? Are we, is our hearts the gate that is open to receive the King of Glory, to be able to be manifested out of us? And this is what he's looking for in this hour. And then you are to also study Psalm 25. Psalm 25 is a prophetic psalm for this time where we're coming into this time where we continue to cry to him to say, show me your ways, O Yahuwah, teach me your paths, lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are a lure of my deliverance. And so he's the one who's bringing us, delivering us out of Egypt. And and all your paths... um. All your paths are your who are of loving commitment and truth to those who God is covenant and is witness. For your name's sake, O Yahuwah, you shall pardon my crookedness, though it is great. And then, who then is the man that fears Yahuwah? He teaches him in the way he should choose. So, then we get, um, verse 16 that says, turn your face to me and show me favor, for I am lowly and afflicted. So, this is the time of where we're coming into now for the Father to be able to show us his favor as we come into this new season. So yesterday, Father had me to go do a prophetic work because on Tuesday, Father had me teach um, uh, Exodus chapter 14, which I put on the group. And for those that have not listened to Exodus chapter 14, it is a very, very prophetic chapter that the Father had me very speaking very prophetically as us being able to be those coming out of this place of where we are in a uh, a place where the enemy is behind us, the Red Sea is in front of us, and what are we going to do? And so yesterday the father had me go do a prophetic work, and the father told me to go and stand at the sea, and I was to stand at the seashore. And the father said, take your scepter. I was given a scepter. Uh, when I was in Johannesburg, I was given a scepter and the father said, take your scepter. And just as Abba Yahuwah stretched out his scepter over us at the time of Purim, at the time of Esther, we don't celebrate Purim, but with Esther when she enters the palace and she goes and stands before the king. And just as the king stretches out his scepter, father said, as you stretch out that scepter, I want to be able to work on behalf of my people. So I had to go and do a prophetic work and stand at the seashore and stretch out that scepter and speak from Exodus chapter 14 when the father, the father spoke to Moses and he said in Exodus chapter 14 when he says, and Moshe said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still. And so this is the prophetic word for the season that we're coming into. Do not be afraid. Stand still. Be still and know that he is Yahuwah. And see the deliverance of Yahuwah, which he does for you today. For the Mitzrites whom you see today, you are never, never to see again. Yahuwah does fight for you and you keep silent. And so this was the prophetic Work that he asked me to do as I was standing at the sea and to be able to prophetically declare into the, into the heavenly realm on behalf of his remnant people to say that be still and know that Yahuwah is your, that he's going to fight for you and you will hold your peace. And then he said, he said to him, and Yahuwah said to Moshe, why do you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel and let them go forward. So what is the father saying? Come forth, come forth, go forward, enter, cross over, come into the new season, come into the new season. Yes, the way I experienced this yesterday was as I was standing in front of that sea, 
I experience this darkness because understand I myself have been coming under such attack in my back. And it's like the father said, from this day forward, I have got your back. You look ahead of you. You go forward. You stand still. Be still and know. Be still and know. Know that he's the one who's going to fight for you. And you will hold your shalom. Be still and know that he is your hua. And then he said, you lift up your rod. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And so this was exactly what the father said. Stretch out that scepter now so that this sea can, can part. So the father said there is a new day, a new dawn. The winds of change have started to blow. And this is what we've got of here. We've got gale force winds that's been going on since half past two this morning. And these winds persist and they've actually just got more and more aggressive as the day progresses. They've just got more and more aggressive. And the father was showing me that even at the time, how do you think he was able to part that sea? It was through these winds that started to blow and parted the sea so that the Israelites could cross. And so he said, he lifted up his rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it and let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And so the father said, we are to now come into the new season that he has asked us to come into the seasons of the season of deliverance, the season of miracles, because this is the season of them now coming into the wilderness where they are going to have to trust the father for the manna from heaven. They are going to have to trust the father for the water that's going to have to come. They're going to have to trust the father for many things that they are going to see many miracles that the father is going to do. So this is the season that we are coming into a season of where we're going to have to trust the Father to see miracles. We are going into a dark season, but for those that will be in him, for his remnant, we are not to fear. We are to stand still and not be afraid. Do not be afraid. So I just felt that the enemy, there's so many people that this enemy has been attacking you and attacking you, and it's been a very, very long, difficult season. But the father says the sea, the, the, the sea is about to part. And so then he had me go into the, into the water. And I had to go dip myself in the water seven times like Nahum because the father said, you see, my child, there are many word binding curses that are upon my people because of the leprosy that is on them that has come because of the mouth. My people have become leprous. They are leprous. And that is why you need to go into the water and go as Nahum had to, to dunk himself seven times in the river Jordan. You are to dip yourself seven times in the sea and go through this mikvah and cleanse my people. As this is a time of cleansing, cleansing all the leprosy that has been upon us, that has kept us clean bound and captive by the enemy's schemes and plans because of some things that we might have spoken, because of other things that people have spoken over us, we have had to go through an absolute cleansing. And so that was what the Father had me do yesterday. And then tonight we will enter into this new year. And this is the prophetic word that I want to release, that is the word that he gave me when I heard him saying, the winds of change have started to blow. And I need you to understand that, you see, this is tied in as well with the winds that are blowing because Father reminded me of a dream that I had in two, not a dream, a vision that I had in 2007 when I was in an African leaders meeting. And I saw the globe of the world spinning on the father's finger. I saw a globe. And as that globe was spinning on the father's finger, it stopped on the continent of Africa. And all of a sudden, I saw the wind, I saw, I saw the father starting to blow on the continent of Africa. And he was blowing. I could see his face and I could see him blowing 
on the continent and shrubs were coming out and trees were coming out and all these things were coming out of it and I was thinking, what is this? And as I saw this, the father gave me the scripture, Matthew. I said, Father, what is this? And he gave you the, he gave me the scripture, Matthew 15 verse 13. And when I went and I opened up my Bible and I looked at Matthew, uh, Matthew 15 verse 13, it says, He answering, He, Yeshua answering, said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be uprooted. So every plant that has not been planted by the Father, every, every single Every single plant, every single system, every single thing that has been planted that was not of the Father's doing is now going to start to be uprooted. And the Father is going to allow the enemy to come and bring the destruction that he needs to bring because it's all going to start crumbling and falling and being uprooted because the enemy is going to be given his time to do what he needs to do. And the Father is going to uproot everything that is not of him. Every single religious system that is standing right now that he did not create is going to crumble. It will be uprooted. And so I know that these winds of change is exactly what the Father said. So what he said to me is as we entering into this new year, we are entering in this new year with the winds of change that have now started to blow. And this was a prophetic word that he gave me on the 13th of August, 2021. And it says, and so this would be the prophetic word that he's releasing for this new year. And it says the winds of change have started to blow. My child, time is short and time is running out. And soon your freedom will be taken from you. My people are still in a deep sleep. They still don't believe anything is going to happen. They have eyes yet do not see. They have ears yet do not hear. My people still think that things are going to go back to the way it was before, but it is not. I have spoken and what is in my word will now start to unfold and come to fulfillment. My people are still trying to pray all of this away. It cannot go away or else my son cannot come. The stage has been set and the rulers of this world are playing their game. But I will allow what must happen until my appointed time. My people do not realize the urgency of the hour. Great, great darkness is upon you. You have entered into a time of great sorrow and if you don't wake up now and prepare yourself, spirit, soul, body, mentally, physically, emotionally, you will not be able to stand in the days ahead. As much destruction is coming and it will be difficult in the different, and it will be different in the different nations. But the whole world is under the sway of the demonic agenda for those who have bowed their knee to the satanic agenda they will soon find out that trying to save their lives only made things worse i need my set apart remnant to now more than ever listen to me hear my voice as your life will depend on it i will guide you i will help you you are not to fear you are not to be anxious for anything but you are to focus on me those whom you trusted before, you will no longer be able to trust as brother will turn against brother. You need to be prepared. You need to be ready as time is quickly running out. My people must not fear. My people need to trust me if you are not going to stand in this time of testing. You will not make what is coming. It is not going to get better. It's going to be more challenging. And I have been testing my people to see through their actions if they truly love me and obey me. Or are they those who worship me with their lips, but, their action, but by their actions they show me that they don't believe me, nor do they trust me. I am calling my people to come higher, to go deeper, as I want to reveal my heart to you, or else... You will not stand in what is soon coming ahead of you. I have had to put you through many fires, but it's to purify the hearts of my people because they are still serving many idols. 
like their jobs and their houses, their cars, their families, their religious systems, I have said that you are not to love anything more than you love me. You are being tested at the moment to show me what you will put above me. The time of trial and testing is upon you and you need to pray about everything. You cannot just make your own decisions. You cannot just go your own way. If you do not make decisions that come from me, it will cost you. It will cost you down the line. I need my remnant to draw closer to me. I need my remnant to receive instructions from me. This is not the time to look to man and what man says. It's time to look to me and what I say. I will lead you through the storm ahead of you. I will take you by the hand and lead you step by step. If you will listen to my voice, if you will be led by my Ruach, I will never leave you or forsake you. But I have not said that you will not have trouble. You will go through many things, but I am with you to help you. That is why you need to surrender everything. I mean everything into my hands. If you want to hold on to it, you will lose it. If you are, if you are to put Nothing above, you are to put nothing above me. I am the focal point of your life and I will lead you along the path that you should go. It's time to let go of the things of this world. It's time for you to cut yourself loose from it or else you will be like Lot's wife who looked back at what she craved for. Let go, let go of everything and hold my hand and I will take you on the path that I have prepared for you like Abraham had to leave everything behind. I call you to leave all and follow me. Come, my child, and follow me. I am your only salvation if you have made me your life's treasure. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. So this is the prophetic word that the Father has given me to be able to speak forth for this evening as we are going to enter into the new year and as we prepare ourselves now for the next 14 days to sit and have our Passover. So may Abba bless you. Shalom, shalom.